Hello and welcome to Rimf Alternative News. I'm Mick Meaney and in this broadcast we're going to kick things off with a report I wrote earlier this evening about George Osborne. Now the headline reads, George Osborne continues scamming the British taxpayer. Now I'm going to explain exactly why this is true. Um, George Osborne has come under fire uh, yet again for refusing to share information about party guests attending his grace and favour country home. The Treasury Department has refused to provide any information claiming the Buckinghamshire residence is for private use. A spokesman said the Prime Minister offered the House to the Chancellor of the Exchequer on his appointment for his private use. Accordingly, the Treasury does not hold details of who was being entertained there. However, Labour MP John Mann said, This is outrageous. The taxpayer is funding these visits. He's right, you know. People are entitled to know who is there and what it is costing them. It is begging the question, what have they got to hide? Well, mate, I can tell you the answer to that, and it's a bloody lot. The article continues, What is known is that Former News International Chief Executive Rebe Rebecca Brooks, do you remember that old hag? And her husband attended the home in 2010. Now I dug up a little bit of information about Osborne because he is no stranger to this kind of criticism. Um, he, he's got a bit of a track record of, of getting into trouble over expenses and that kind of thing. In 2009 he came under uh, the spotlight for the way that he flicked his second home. Uh, it was an effort to pay less capital gains tax and uh, he owes, according to the Liberal Democrats, he owes £55,000 to the public purse. Now check this out, this is quite funny. He also claimed £47 for two copies of a DVD of his own speech, ironically on value for taxpayers' money. You can't make this stuff up, can you? Now, only in Britain and probably the USA as well could a politician with a history of scamming the public become Chancellor of the Exchequer. In fact, really, they're all scammers. They're all criminals. The whole thing is a racket. It's criminal. It's near mafia-like um, control that these people have got over the system. It, it's uh, f so far-reaching into almost every aspect of our lives. I mean, George Osborne himself is in bed with um, lobbyists for the energy companies in the, in, in the UK. His father-in-law, who served under Ma Margaret Thatcher, is also in bed with these people. These people are criminal. It's a racket. And we have to say enough. Of course, it's easy to vote one lot out when they're just replaced with another lot. Um, when when Labour were, were in uh, power, when I started Rent for Alternative News in uh, 2004, it was uh, Labour. They were the criminals in, in government, and they were criminal. I, where do you start? Um, so it's no point voting these bastards out, because they're just replaced by another bunch of bastards. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Um, this one... Um, disturbed me a little bit it's emerged that adidas uh you know the company that makes um lo those sports clothes and um trainers and that kind of stuff where adidas or adidas if you're young and hip um have have been putting in rfid chips into some of their football shirts uh, they've actually admitted this um the article i wrote states that the company has already sold thousands of football shorts, shirts sorry, that carry these RFID tags. Um, RFID, radio frequency identification, is used to track data or send information uh, via electromagnetic fields. Now, Adidas said, as part of a logistics project, we have tested for the first time an RFID label with a virtual number. It is a read-only label without any additional data. The label is not tied 
to the article number, size or colour of the article. Uh, we also can't link it with end customer data. So they're basically saying that uh, there's no privacy concerns, it's okay. Um, they also say that it's up to the customer to cut out the RFID label and throw it away. Now, what can they gain from doing this? Um, okay, at the moment, these RFID tags might not carry any information, but that doesn't mean they won't in the future, and it doesn't mean that they can't be used to carry information about individuals. Um, they they can be programmed remotely. This is something that they they don't talk about. It say it's read only at the moment. Um, that can change. This whole thing is is just a way of selling it to you to get you used to the idea. It's like um, it's like how we're sold so much when it comes to Big Brother and this surveillance society. It, it's all pushed in for ulterior reason so we're sold it for one reason and then what well, once it's in once everyone accepts it it's okay then they change it and there's nothing you can do about it because we're all used to it and that's just the way it is i'm going to talk more about um big brother and, and the surveillance society in this broadcast there's another couple of reports which i wrote today that i want to um cover and um, we start with this one about um, Nigerian biometric ID cards. The headline I wrote states 13 million Nigerians to receive MasterCard's biometric ID card. With the intention of producing a national identity management system, 13 million Nigerians will be issued with eID cards. The cards will hold highly sensitive information, including health insurance status, tax information, driver licensing, birth and death records, and there are also plans to use the cards for border control. Now, perhaps most disturbingly, the cards will also function as a payment method because they are linked to MasterCard. It holds biometric information, including 10 fingerprints, and a retinal scan. Alongside the biometric data, these invasive cards will also carry two photographs of the holder. Now, the Director General of the Commission, which will implement this scheme, said there are many cases for the card, including the potential to use it as an international travel document. It's focused on inclusive citizenship, more effective governance, uh, listen carefully folks the creation of a cashless economy all of which will stimulate economic growth investment and trade how many times have we heard that before we're bringing in this really draconian measures it will stimulate the economy it's good for you this is for your own benefit when we know it's bullshit right now it's being sold as one thing people will accept it get used to it and before you know it this information is going to be used to harm and survey us once this kind of thing becomes acceptable in one country before you know it another country will, will embrace it take it on board and then everyone's used to it and then they'll turn the screws and start abusing what they, they've brought in. I'm going to cover this more in, in the next report um, about what's already happened in the UK but um, while we're still speaking about the this um, biometric ID card in Nigeria um, Privacy International's legal officer Anna Crow has spoke out against the cards. Now she said centralizing and combining government databases makes it easy to link together pieces of information about individuals and build a near complete profile of someone's life. Now this is important stuff people. Um, the, the type of capability is extremely invasive she says. Uh, the crucial issue is to put in place safeguards that guarantee fundamental principles of data are being respected such as only using data for the purpose for which it was collected. 
how many times have we have ha, has something been brought in and then it's just changed say it's for one thing and it's used for another um, she continues that this is extremely challenging for any country let alone one that already faces significant challenges around corruption and ensuring respect for human rights now she asks a couple of really good questions here she says what does mastercard and the bank's involvement entail will data be shared for commercial gain how will nigerians be confident that their right to privacy is being upheld valid questions essential questions i mean in the states um we've got schools which are collecting information about children and and without parental consent and then passing this information off to third parties, selling it for profit. And companies, corporations, and probably governments are building um, profiles about these these children. And uh, these people are going to be in the system for life. They're, they're being conditioned into believing that it's acceptable to hand over private information. Uh, in fact, the UK, uh, which I'm going to speak about in in the um, the next report but in the UK the police are building a mass database of children's biometric data for what reason for what they they know it's unacceptable for us for us adults to 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 uh, hand over this um, this sensitive information so they target the kids instead because the the kids don't know any different they'll just do as they're told because a policeman says they have to and it's conditioning children to believe that this level of surveillance this level of treatment is okay when you and i and adults will will not tolerate that we will stand up we will say no that's against my human rights but children of course they don't know and um the system the establishment abuses that and they abuse children in so many different ways and that's just one of the ways that they're abusing our children now i'm going to talk about the uk um, surveillance society in in the next article which is this mass three-day protest outside gchq now a mass protest outside outside gchq is about to take place from friday to monday in an effort to raise concerns about the increasing levels of government and corporate surveillance on British citizens by our government and foreign governments. Now, the three-day protest was organized by the We Are Anonymous group, and it is estimated that around 600 people will attend. Now, say what you like about protests, and now I'm going to actually speak very briefly about my opinion on on protests but say what you like in this case it has drawn attention um, certainly within the alternative media the British alternative media has brought more attention um, on on the topic of surveillance and Big Brother um, to be honest I think in most cases protests are pretty useless um, I know that's a very controversial statement for someone in the alternative media to make but um, are they effective? I don't believe that they they really are. Um, I used to, and I used to attend um, demonstrations, uh, protests, and marches. Um, but I got the feeling that these were just set up to make people like myself, who wanted to do something, wanted to make a difference, they were just set up to appease people like myself, to make people like myself and possibly you feel like we were doing something worthwhile like we were making a stand we we're saying no when it when in fact it doesn't matter if you if you say no or not they're still going to do it anyway i mean are gchq really going to stop the level of surveillance now because 600 people say enough is enough no if two million people march it's not enough they'll still continue we saw that before they um invaded iraq uh with the the protests and the level of public outcry saying no absolutely not they don't care they'll still do it there's too much money to be made there's 
too much control to be gained from uh, from this thing and this big brother issue the surveillance society is absolutely the same they're not going to stop because a few hundred people say enough um, they're, they're not going to stop if a few million people say enough and of course I don't think anyone in We Are Anonymous expects GCHQ to stop I think um, Anonymous have set up this protest in an effort which is commendable to draw attention to the issue which it's certainly doing here Anyway, um, and I believe they had a little bit on the BBC as well, um, on the BBC website, about the protest. So, in that respect, this protest can be called a success. It is drawing attention to um, to the issue. But I think, in general, protests are just set up to make people like you and I feel better, like we're doing something when uh, when those in control, those in power know that it, it's meaningless it doesn't matter now the issues that um, anonymous are hoping to draw attention to but where do we start um, the UK is the most surveilled country on the planet and has been for quite a long time now um, I think if you have a look at the RIMF privacy archives there is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of articles in there that will show you how we got from from a relatively um, free society with you know minimal surveillance to becoming this big brother nation um, well we are the guinea pigs they are testing out new things on us and the, once we accept it and we say okay and then um, they refine it they ship this technology they ship these ideas around the globe for for other go governments to to use on their citizens and that's why we are why we in in the UK are the guinea pigs of this surveillance society experiment go have a look at the rimf archive you'll see how step by step since 911 how this um draconian agenda has become a reality um, if you, you remember in around 2007 now thanks to, to public outcry not protests and demonstrations so much but sheer resistance of the public um, the government could not bring in ID cards um, of course the Tories came in and claimed they scrapped the idea but you and I both know that Tories and Labour are um, two sides of the same coin there's no real difference between any of the political parties. The whole system is is rigged. They came in and they said, right, we're scrapping this uh, ID card plan. And then last year they tried to bring them back again uh, through the back door, saying, if you're a British citizen, um, you're going to need a card to use the NHS um, to stop immigrants and illegal foreigners from uh, using the the um, NHS of course it didn't wash and they will still try to bring in ID cards in the UK um, we've got so many CCTV cameras we, we, we're, we are the most surveilled country on, on the planet I step outside my front door I'm recorded on CCTV immediately straight away my face is on CCTV I walk around Lancaster in the UK where I live and uh, I'm, I'm on on film everywhere I go around the city centre I walk outside the city centre I'm still being recorded I have mapped every single um, CCTV camera in my town and outside around it and there is a lot they are everywhere but yet that's acceptable that's okay um, in the bigger cities we have uh, surveillance drones again they said oh we'll bring this in to um, monitor traffic levels they're not being used for traffic levels that they, they, they're used to follow people suspects um, you see they bring something in on, on the one guys and then they switch it and they change it and they say actually we're using it for this now and people tend to tolerate this shite um, 
where else do you start with it? You've got cameras in uh, cars recording motorists, seeing how well they park. You've got uh, national databases, our, our information being collected, sometimes mandatory, and added to, to these databases, as I said previously about building a, a, a database, of, database of kids' biometric information. It's absolutely disgusting. Uh, what's happening in the, this country and it is being exported all around the world um, they bring in laws like Ripper which is again this terrorist excuse it's there to, to prevent terrorism and it's being used to install cameras in people's homes in people's living rooms around the country you have the cameras monitoring what they're doing because the council now has the legal authority to do that to install these cameras to look through people's rubbish bin to to see the personal documents to monitor every single citizen's internet activity i'm almost speechless but see this is why i shouldn't talk about surveillance so much because um, I get a bit heated, a bit passionate about it because I've just seen in the 10 years that I've been doing uh, Rimf Alternative News, I've just seen this country slide into so much, so much surveillance. And it's not just the UK, is it? It's happening all over the world. And the majority of the people think it's acceptable because the bloody mainstream media says it's acceptable. Oh, it's not on... Uh, BBC, so it can't be true. I had an argument with someone yesterday, but well, I haven't heard that on BBC. Yes, there is a reason why BBC won't report certain facts, certain truths. Think about the funding. Where where do they get their funding from? Who allows them to profit? It's in their best interest to not report certain truths. And this is why an alternative media has emerged. This is why we are so essential in this fight and even though everyone in the alternative media almost everyone in the alternative media is skint and broke we still continue on a shoestring because it's the right thing to do so i'm going to leave it there thank you for checking out this broadcast i'm mcmaney reporting for rimf alternative news and i hope to see you next time